Hello there. My verse for today is uh, Romans 12, 1. A very well-known verse. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship or reasonable worship. Of course, he says, I appeal to you, therefore. And we have to ask, why did he say that? And this chapter, of course, comes at the end of 11 chapters of the most amazing uh, arguments and discussions of how the salvation come through Jesus has been brought about um, and how amazing it is and how universal it is that no one escapes its scope, uh, Jew or Gentile, uh, even the Jews who thought they had a better standing with God um, needed to review that in the light of the sacrifice of Jesus because their heritage, everything that they thought they owed salvation to was worth nothing now that Jesus had come and only those with faith in Jesus were going to move forward into eternal life. But he ends chapter 11 in verse 33 saying, Oh, the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and how inscrutable his ways. How unsearchable are his judgments. God is so different to us. His thinking, his planning, his judgments, his wisdom are wonderful. And they've all been used by God to bring salvation to all of us. So we reach a point in this letter that Paul has written where it's the response. How are we going to respond to all this wonderful truth about God and what he's done for us? How much Jesus suffered for us? How amazingly God worked through history to bring about the moment when Jesus came and when he would die for us. I have a have, have a lovely Bible that um, was given to me a few years ago. It's called the C.S. Lewis Bible, and it has within it quotes from C.S. Lewis that are applicable to various verses in the Scripture uh, to add uh, to the thinking. Um, C.S. Lewis, a great, uh, great scholar, great thinker, a man who came to faith quite late in life, um, and wrote such wonderful books, um, <clears throat> each one well worth a read. But this quote comes from his, his book, Mere Christianity. And, uh, and this is what he writes about a living sacrifice. Uh, Give yourself up and you will find your real self. Lose your life and you will save it. Submit to death death of your ambitions and favourite wishes every day, and death of your whole body in the end. Submit with every fibre of your being, and you will find eternal life. Keep back nothing. Nothing that you have not given away will ever be really yours. Nothing in you that has not died will ever be raised from the dead. Look for yourself, and you will find, in the long run, only hatred, loneliness, despair, rage, ruin and decay. But look for Christ and you will find him and with him everything else thrown in. That's C.S. Lewis. Our response to what, what God has done, to what Jesus has done, is to give everything to him as a living sacrifice. And the thing with a living sacrifice is, I mean, a dead sacrifice you can sacrifice, and it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't fight you. It doesn't object. But our living sacrifice, ourselves, our whole beings and per personality, and everything about us, everything about being human, doesn't want to give up autonomy, doesn't want to submit will to another, does not want to be ruled by another. 
it's natural for us to want to run our own lives, for us to want to be our own person. Uh, our society is always saying things like, you, you know, don't, don't lean on anyone. Don't lean on anyone else. You don't know when they'll let you down, and and they, and they, all of us will die if we rely on other people. We have to be self-sufficient. Um, everything you need is within yourself. You know, if you if you need if you need mental healing, spiritual healing, then the best thing to do is to go to a counselor and talk things out. And then you talk all about how you feel about everything. And it's all about you. But the thing about Christianity is that it turns, uh, Jesus turns everything upside down. Jesus transforms us. Transforms us from self-centered creatures whose only concern is our own well-being into people who care for others. People who do little things, who notice little things people who love, people who go out of their way to help others and support others, people who are self-sacrificing. And the, the amazing thing is that God, when we have put ourselves on that altar, when we've said, Lord, I want you, I don't want me, I want you, Lord, I give it all up. I present myself, I present my body as a living sacrifice, I present my voice as a living sacrifice, I present my hands as a living sacrifice, I present my mind as a living sacrifice, I present my eyes, my ears, my feet, I present myself everything, I give you everything, all my personal wishes and longings, I give them to you. And as we submit to him, he knows, he made us, he made you, he made me. He knows what would be the most fulfilling things for you to do with your life and for me to do with my life. And he gives them to us. He calls us to do things that actually lead us to being more fulfilled and more rounded as people than we ever would have been if we'd done it on our own or tried to do it alone because we'd never have succeeded. I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice. And because we're living sacrifices, there is a very real sense in which we have to do this every day, because we keep getting up and walking away and doing our own thing, thinking of ourselves first. It's a lifelong struggle to submit to that offering of ourselves to God. Have a great day. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.